Hey folks, Ray from DCGrammarker.com here. Today I've got Wahoo's newest product, the Wahoo Ticker Fit. Uh, now, the Ticker series of Wahoo products in the past has been uh, the Ticker, the Ticker Run, the Ticker X. They're all heart rate straps, uh, and that build on what they had well before that, which is really the first Bluetooth smart heart rate strap out there, the Wahoo Blue HR. That was like six years ago, a long, long time ago. Um, but the Ticker Fit is essentially their first optical foray, which means that it's the first optical heart rate sensor they've made. All the past sensors have been chest straps, so things that you wrap around your chest, whereas this is designed to wrap around your arm. Uh, so the Ticker Fit uh, sells for 79 bucks. It was just announced today, well, when you're watching this video today, I filmed this a while ago, um, and it's actually available today as well. So Wahoo is kind of one of the few companies in this segment, in this kind of sports technology segment uh, that basically does same day announcement shipping type stuff. So they did it with their kicker, not so much the climb, uh, but with the bolt, with the element was a little bit more delayed, but in general, they've been kind of trying to go towards same day announce and ship. So you can actually buy it right now. Um, anyways, as I said, 79 bucks, uh, which makes it the same price as the Skosh Rhythm Plus, And I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, in the same ballpark as well as the Polar OH-1, which is also an optical heart rate strap. But first I'm gonna do a quick unboxing. I mean, there's not really much to unbox here and then I'm gonna do a bit of a run test a bit of a bike test and kind of show you how things work out uh, and then also don't forget to check out my full in-depth review in the description down below there there is a boatload more test data there um, all the different sets and stuff like that so anyways this is the box itself right here uh, pretty lightweight box I mean it's, it's really really small um, and go open it up slide it out and you can see the unit sitting right there um, so below this here uh, we've got it looks like an extra strap right there so this would be uh, just probably either a longer strap or a shorter strap I'm looking at this I'm gonna guess this is a shorter strap it's a little bit thinner than this one right there uh, by the looks of things maybe yeah, a little bit tiny bit thinner I think um, and probably shorter uh, and then over here we have what looks to be a charger so if we open this up there we go uh, so you can see it's uh, standard USB on this side, not USB-C, just standard USB, um, and then two little charging prongs there. So a little bit of a bummer that it's not like a micro USB or something that you can just plug in, but that tends to have waterproofing issues uh, longer term, so it's probably better they went with this instead. Um, this unit is IPX7 waterproofed, uh, which means that it's down for one meter at 30 minutes, um, and that's, you know, submersion. So like if you were swimming on the surface um, and you had it sort of right at level there, you're probably fine for a little longer than that. You know, as you go down in depth, it's a lot more pressure than even just a, a few inches into the into the water. Um, any case, here is a uh, important safety guide. Kind of the usual: if you die doing something like this, it's definitely your fault. Uh, and then we have a quick start guide right here. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you want to download their app or any app, uh, and then just get it all paired up. It's super easy. And I'll talk about what it has and doesn't have inside of it. But let's talk about this heart rate strap here. So. I'll be back. All good, I think. So heart rate strap. Um, as I mentioned, here is the strap. Uh, here is the heart rate sensor. Uh, if we look at the other strap that was included, it should be a lot more visible now that yes, that one was definitely a lot shorter than this one. Uh, so quite a bit of difference there. Uh, and I'm pretty sure they are, eh, I guess they are the same thickness. So, oh well. Um, and here's a sensor pod. So what you see on the back there is an optical heart rate sensor. Uh, this is Wahoo's own optical heart rate sensor design. They are not working with another company um, for this particular one. Uh, certainly there are other players out there like Valencell is one that provides optical heart rate sensors to different companies, um, but not in this case. And that's something kind of the trend I've seen is that most companies, you know, Garmin, Polar, uh, I'm trying to think of who else out there, the big ones, Apple, of course, Fitbit, et cetera, are doing their own in-house development these days of sensors in the past. They would outsource that out to companies like Valencell and Mio and Philips and so on. Uh, but nowadays, uh, they just do it in-house because I think the technology has evolved enough. These companies are understanding this and, and doing a reasonably good job of it. Um, the other challenge, too, is that some of the sensors like those from Valencell um, aren't as good from a battery life standpoint. Uh, and so, um, and to be really clear from a super technical detail level, Valencell technically doesn't make sensors. They make a sensor package or a recommended package, uh, and that's what they put in there. But from a battery standpoint, those aren't that great for staying on 24 by 7, uh, whereas companies now want to be able to have a lot longer battery life to have optical sensors on 24 four by seven. Speaking of battery life, uh, the ticker fit here gets 30 hours of battery life, which is about three times its nearest friend, um, which is a Skosh, uh, which gets about 10 hours. The Polar OH-1 gets about 
that many hours. Um, so you can kind of put that in there. Uh, what is cool about this though, and just like the Skosh uh, for the same price, is that it does have both AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart. So no matter what device you're using out there, you can connect to this, whereas the Polar OH1 only has Bluetooth Smart. Um, so there are some pros and cons there. On the flip side, the Polar OH1 does have uh, storage in it and it can recognize certain activities and stuff um, if you use the Polar platform in particular, whereas the Skosh does not have any storage. At the same time though, you know, we are coming up on CES, maybe we'll see something new from Skosh. They historically have announced products at CES and I think the Rhythm Plus is a bit overdue. So we'll see what happens. Um, in any case, on the bottom here, we've got a button. Um, and on the other side, we've got a LED light once we turn this on here, let's see. There we go, so you can see the status LED light right there. And then you can see on the bottom here, um, those are the LEDs for the optical heart rate sensor. So this would simply go like right there, um, using the strap, you can tie it on, and then it transmits out your heart rate to AMP Plus and Bluetooth smart devices. So that means you can use sort of whatever device you want, as I mentioned. Uh, it could be something like the Wahoo Element here. It could be something like the Garmin Edge 1000. It could be a GPS watch. It could be an app on your phone. It could be Zwift, it could be Trainer Road. It could be anything you want, and it'll be able to connect to this uh, in theory, no problems. Okay, just to look really quick at size and weight comparisons here. Um, I know a lot of people might ask about this, so here's a simple scale. Uh, here is the Skosh Rhythm Plus, uh, and then this here is the Wahoo Ticker Fit. Uh, so this, I would say, is a little bit thinner than the Skosh. I mean, not, not much, not that much that you would notice anyways. Um, and thickness-wise, it's definitely a little bit less wide. Um, so it's a def certainly a little smaller pod. It's not quite as small as the Polar OH-1, and I do have that pod here, but I can't actually find the strap right now. Uh, but in a nutshell, the Polar H OH-1 is the size of the round portion inside there, and about the same thickness. Um, so a little bit smaller, the strap a little bit smaller. Unfortunately, that also makes it a little easier to lose, as I've done now, um, but it, that one is smaller unit. Uh, on the flip side, again, no amp plus in it, so that may matter to some people. Uh, from a weight standpoint, so we're gonna put this on here, and I'll put the big strap on there just because. Uh, so that comes in at 20 grams right there. And then if I put the Skosh on there, uh, that's got the lower strap as well, 23 grams. Uh, three grams, you're not gonna notice that up on your arm, so I, I would really consider that uh, negligible. So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, head out for either a run or a bike. I haven't quite decided, it's pretty miserable right now, so I might just do a trainer ride first, uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay, here we are outside. It is a miserably cold and windy day. Um, so I'm just gonna go through this as quick as possible because it's just not very nice out right now. Um, so what I've got here is the ticker fit is on my upper arm. It's right about there or so. I've turned it on already. Uh, so the LED light is on, but you can't quite see it through the, the long sleeve here, unfortunately. And I've got here a 409.35. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and basically do a simple pairing on it so you can see add new. So I'm gonna go in there. Click that, I'm going to go down to external heart rate sensor to find the external heart rate sensor here. Uh, now I'm wearing the ticker fit and I'm also wearing a Polar H7 heart rate sensor, so it will likely find both of them. Uh, typically the 4935 will show you amp plus sensors first. There we go, boom right there. That 1089 is the amp plus sensor for the ticker fit. Uh, and then eventually it'll also show you the Bluetooth smart sensor here if I wait long enough. Uh, so I'll give it a couple more seconds before I go on, uh, but it doesn't usually show them right away. It's kind of a delayed, um, showing of those sensors so uh, we'll go to go simply continue then we'll click that uh, that will go ahead and add it and you can see now on the list here if i go up there it is heart rate sensor right there and then i can go see the connected status i could look at the about i could rename it to the ticker fit if i want to but it's too effing cold and windy right now to do that um, so if i look at about it may show wahoo in there but not necessarily in the manufacturer it just depends on how it enumerates uh, if we go back here into the main watch menu we're going to choose to run uh, while it's doing that, I'm gonna go and just show you, it's gonna find some satellites. I can go down and I can see my heart rate in there, right there. So 71, 72 beats per minute. And it's as simple as that. Uh, it's finding GPS, it's almost got that already locked. And we'll head out for a run. Um, I'm not gonna really show you the run too much because honestly, it's just the heart rate number. It's just simply that number. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and dive into uh, the data. So we'll go back inside and I'm gonna show you data first from this run, maybe another run, uh, maybe show you some biking, cycling data, uh, and then I'll link down again. All the data sets are in the thingy in the bottom description there of the in-depth review. So let's go inside after some quick B-roll.
Okay, so here we are inside uh, and looking at some of the data. I've got four different sets I'm going to run through really quickly here. Two running and two cycling. Uh, all these sets are analyzed using what's called the DCR analyzer. Uh, it's basically an analytic suite that I've developed to go ahead and help me analyze uh, sensor data like heart rate, power, cadence, and so on. Uh, you can use it yourself if you want to. Links down at the bottom. Uh, let's just dive right into it. This is kind of mostly a steady state run minus a few kind of sprints towards the end over here and some stops right there in the middle briefly. Um, so so what you see here compared to a Polar H7 heart rate strap, uh, it's pretty good across the middle here. Like things are pretty clean right there. Um, a little separation right there briefly. I'm not really sure why, but uh, otherwise it's pretty good. Again, a little bit of separation briefly for a couple seconds here. We're only talking four or five beats though, and only for a few seconds, not too long. Uh, they both dip down just fine there. And again, uh, mostly good here, but at the end here, we see a bit more separation on these sprints. There's like one sprint there, one sprint right there, one sprint here, uh, and one sprint over here. So those kind of four dots right there and what you see in each case is the polar h7 uh, captures the higher end of that sprint just fine so you see my heart rate spikes up to 181 whereas the ticker fit sort of tops out at like 172 sort of the same thing here again 188 versus 181 and again here as well 186 versus 180 and this is sort of the trend i see on a bunch of different sets that i'll get into um, but again overall in this first kind of steady state run for the most part uh, things are actually pretty good minus just small differences in the sprints at the higher end for those very short duration intervals. Now let's look at another run. This is a pure super clean interval run. Um, now at the very beginning is actually really interesting because this shows sort of the downsides to chest straps. Uh, this is a very cold, dry day, pretty windy, so the chest strap dried out really easily despite me wetting it. Um, and what you see there is that at the beginning the ticker is actually correct. This is the correct build that you would expect over the course of the first couple minutes of my heart rate, whereas the H7 just flatlines. Obviously I'm not running along at a nice brisk pace at uh, 85, 90 beats per minute. At that point the two both catch up. They are virtually identical through you know the build here into the first interval. This this is the first full interval right here. Second roll interval looks really good. Third interval, you know, a little bit of fluctuation at the end there. I'm not quite sure what was going on there, but a little bit of blips there. Uh, then again, fourth interval, it's pretty darn good there. I mean, tiny minor nuances, differences right there, but nothing I would get too upset about. The fifth interval, I see a bit more separation between them. Um, I think this is actually because I was taking some pictures right there, and that may be impacting the, the ticker because it may be looking at cadence and stuff from my arm being changed. So um, that may be what's going on there. But again, in the these really short like sprints I was doing right here, you know the one, two, three, four, the exact same thing where you see the difference at the peak um, heart rate for each one, you know, 168 versus 161. So some slight differences there where again the ticker isn't quite going, uh, the ticker fit that it isn't quite going as high as you want. Um, now let's look at cycling. This is an indoor ride on Zwift, um, and you can see there's a, actually a bunch of heart rate straps here, but essentially it boils down to being a uh, power cal heart rate strap, a chest strap, uh, a Wahoo ticker fit, obviously, and then a 400 935 optical sensor. And by and large, these are almost identical across the entire timeline you see some slight differences from a timing standpoint that could be a little bit of recording rate a little bit of delay within a given sensor by a second or two <clears throat> but for the most part pretty darn good uh, this purple drop right there is actually the 935 optical sensor not keeping up correctly um, but i mean by and large these are actually identical in terms of the um, overall line it's just simply they're offset by a couple seconds in some cases uh, for any particular reason i'm not really sure why but they are but so i'm not super concerned about that finally we'll end with an outdoor ride uh, and what you see here was sort of the inverse. If I go to the very beginning right there, you can see that the ticker fit failed to rise quickly on the heart rate like uh, the power cal did. So that shows that in that case, the ticker fit wasn't correct. The power cal um, or the heart rate chest heart rate strap was correct. Um, through this whole middle section right here, things are pretty good, especially like right there. Um, things are good in this area. However, this area right here, uh, a sprint I did, the ticker fit completely and totally missed a sprint. This is an 800 or so watt sprint um, for uh, quite a fair bit of time. And it just just totally completely missed it I mean it shows me down to 80 beats per minute versus the reality was uh, 150 or so you know starting off 150 ish so um, that's a bit of a, a bummer but then it's really really smooth here a single artifact on the the heart rate strap randomly up to like almost 200 which is incorrect of course um, things are good there and then this I was doing some photo taking in this middle ground right there so I'm not gonna worry too much about that um, but right here is interesting this is after I stopped taking the photos and I started riding again you'll see that 
initially the ticker just did that same flat line like for 90 beats per minute for no particular reason and then the the heart rate strap was just fine it showed the rise in heart rate took another couple minutes and then at that point things more or less were the same for the remainder of the ride so you know overall uh from like a running standpoint as you saw right here pretty darn good um really really clean looking for the majority of the time period cycling really good indoors but not so good outdoors and i've got more sets than this this is just kind of some of the sets I've, i'm using in the video to keep things sort of short if you look down in the description there to my in the view i have links to all these sets you can actually download the original files uh but that's that's the data for you so there you go just wrapping things up with the ticker fit you know overall it's a good little unit um but for 79 bucks if you look at the uh competitors out there like the Skosh Rhythm Plus or the Polar OH1. Uh, both of those actually have more features. They have things like, you know, broadcasting the pace and cadence in the case of the Skosh out, so you can connect that to apps and devices. In the case of the Polar OH1, it has storage on it, so you can download workouts after the fact if you don't have a watch with you. Uh, not, probably not as useful for running and cycling, but maybe more useful for like a gym scenario where you can't have another device or don't want to have another device on you. Uh, anyways, again, check out the full interview in the description there. Uh, with that, thanks for watching. Have a good one.